Hi, welcome to the fourth lesson in this series about light. Have you ever wondered why you can see yourself in a mirror? Or why when you look in a mirror, the image that you see is exactly like you in every way, including how big you are? Well, today we're going to investigate these questions and see if we can come to some explanation. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to explain using an appropriate ray diagram how an image is formed in a mirror and you will also be able to list the properties of the images formed in a mirror. You have already learned that light can be reflected and that the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. But the other day as I was training in the gym, I was wondering, how is it that I can see myself in the mirror? Could this knowledge of how light reflects help me to answer my questions? So, why don't we see if we can explain why we can see ourselves in a mirror? When I stand two meters away from a full-length mirror, I can see my whole body. This seems quite logical because this is a full-length mirror. It is long enough for your whole body to fit into the mirror. The light from my head is reflected by the mirror. Light moves in a straight line from the top of my head, hits the mirror and bounces straight back. An image forms somewhere on the other side of the mirror on this line. Another ray of light is reflected off my head at an angle. After it has hit the mirror, this ray of light is reflected back into my eyes. My brain then thinks that it is seeing a light ray that has traveled in a straight line. So, if we extend the reflected line backwards past the mirror, we see that it seems to come from the point where this ray meets the first ray. The image of my head forms at this point. But what about my feet? Well, light moves from my feet, just like from my head, and hits the mirror. The one ray of light is reflected straight back, but the other strikes the mirror at an angle. After this ray of light hits the mirror, it is reflected into my eyes, and so I can see the image. If we once again extend the reflected ray backwards through the mirror, we see that it meets the first ray. In this way, the image of my feet forms in the mirror. Are you beginning to understand how the image you see in a mirror is formed? But what do we notice about the image we see? Is the image the same size as the object? To answer this question, we would have to draw a scale diagram. For this diagram, we'll use the scale 10 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. Here we have a line that represents the mirror and here is the person. If the person is 1.6 meters tall, my figure should be 16 centimeters tall. And remember, we said the person stood 2 meters away from the mirror. So we have to ensure that we place our figure 20 centimeters away from the mirror. You should notice that the image forms 20 centimeters behind the mirror and is 16 centimeters tall. Wow! That means that the image of the person forms the same distance behind the mirror as the person is standing in front of the mirror and that the image of the person is the same size. This diagram confirms two properties of a mirror image. That a mirror image is the same size as the object being reflected and that the image is the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. Now the next property is a little more difficult. The interesting thing I want you to notice is what happens to the image when the person being reflected moves. When I wave my right hand in the mirror, it looks as if my image is waving its left hand. If I wave my left hand, it looks as if my image is waving its right hand. So, my right hand is on the left side in the mirror, and my left hand is on the right side in the mirror. We explain this by saying that the image is laterally inverted. This means that the image has been turned around, so the left is now right, and the right is now left. 
Can you think of a situation where it is a good thing that the image in a mirror is laterally inverted? That's right, with ambulances. When you look at the word on the ambulance, it seems to be the wrong way around. When an ambulance is behind a car, the driver can see the word ambulance the right way around in their rear view mirror. The word ambulance is written the wrong way around deliberately so that a car's driver will see it the right way around and know that there's an ambulance behind them and if necessary, get out of the way. Let's look at my footage in the gym again. Do you think that the image formed in the mirror is a real image? To answer this question, we have to define what a real image is first. When a real image is formed, light travels to the image or from the image. Do you remember the image formed in the pinhole camera? Can you see here, light is traveling to the image. So this is an example of a real image. Because you are able to see the image on a screen, means that light travels from the image to your eyes. Is the same true for the image formed in the mirror? In this case, light is reflected from the mirror's surface back to your eyes, making you see your image. Light does not really come from or travel to this sort of image. This is called a virtual image. To explain what is actually happening, let's take a look at the diagram on the screen. The solid lines show how the light actually moves. The reason we see a virtual image in the mirror is because our brain has been programmed to accept that light only travels in straight lines. The dotted lines show how our brains think the light has moved. These lines actually come from behind the mirror, but they give the impression that there is something there. This is the image we see. Now let's recap all of these properties. The image is the same size as the object. The image is the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. The image is laterally inverted. The image is virtual. Let's apply this knowledge we have gained about mirrors. Do you think that a person will be able to see his whole body in only a half-length mirror? Let's take a look at the diagram we drew for the full-length mirror. Here, we can see that where the light rays are being reflected from is halfway up the mirror. So, in this case, the mirror could be only half the size and the person would still be able to see his whole body. Everything is still exactly the same and all four properties are still valid. So, today you have learned how it is possible for us to see images in a mirror. But before I go, I have a problem which I'd like you to solve. Pretend that you're a spy. You are stuck behind a wall and you need to see what is happening around the corner. But you can't put your head around the corner because it is dangerous. You now need to design some sort of device which can help you see around the corner without you having to put your hand or your head around the corner. You have the following equipment at your disposal. Two flat mirrors, tape, press stick, and cardboard. Once you have designed your device, you'll need to draw ray diagrams to show how it will work. If possible, build your device to test if it works. Remember, your teacher is there to help you if you get stuck or need ideas on where to start. <laughs> Good luck and have fun. Goodbye, see you next time. Yeah.